How to play finger style or finger picking guitar, lesson 21. This lesson is a continuation of lesson 20. So if you haven't seen that lesson yet, it's worthwhile watching it through. I'll put a link to that video down below in the description, as well as a link to a playlist of the complete course. And to follow this lesson, or to practice what you've learnt in this lesson, you might want to have sight of the ebook, and you can view that for free at the website www.ebooksforguitar.com. And from there, you just click the link to the lessons, select whether you're right or left-handed, and then click the link to the course on how to play fingerstyle guitar. In lesson 20, you'll remember we looked at a number of finger picking patterns that can be used in any 4 4 time tune. However, in that lesson, we didn't cover what you'd do if you came across a half bar or where the chord changes twice in a bar. So that's what we'll be covering in this lesson. How to play finger picking patterns when the chords change halfway through the bar. Now, I could summarise this entire lesson by saying, basically, when you get a half bar, you just play the first half of the finger picking pattern twice. However, this needs some explanation. Here you can see I've got some of the finger picking patterns we used in lesson 20. And looking down the left hand column, you can see that that's a complete bar playing C major. However, looking at the right hand column, you can see we're playing C major and changing to A minor halfway through the bar. Now, the main reason we play the first half of the finger picking pattern again is because it introduces the bass of the second chord. And musically, this just works well and sounds good. So, looking at all the first bass notes, you can see it's a C, or the third fret on the A string. Then, looking exactly halfway through the bar, where it changes to an A minor, you'll see that the bass note is the A, which is the second open string. Now, an important thing I need to point out at the beginning of the lesson, and I'll probably point it out at the end because it is important, and that's that this is just a suggestion and a starting place so you get used to the idea. If you've got a creative idea for changing chords halfway through a bar whilst maintaining the finger picking pattern, then that's great. Use that as well. However, it's good to have a foundation to build on. Right, if we take a closer look at these first two finger picking patterns, they demonstrate something interesting. You can see that the two complete bars are very different. However, when you take the first half of the bar, it's identical. And there's actually a number of finger picking patterns we looked at in lesson 20 that produce the same first half bar. So if you notice this, don't worry about it. You're playing correctly. But you might also find that you like this way of dealing with the half bars and therefore you can apply this to many different 4-4 four, four times finger picking patterns. Right, I'll play through each of these examples one by one to give you a good idea how they should be played. And to make them sound better, I've turned them into a simple line with a full bar of C, then half a bar of C going to a half a bar of A minor and finishing on an E minor full bar. And I'll play each of the six examples the same way. If you want to, feel free to play along with me. I'll play them all the same way, with a two bar introduction, 
and I'll play them firstly at 90 beats per minute and then 100 beats per minute. Example 1. Example 1 at 90 beats per minute. Here that is again at a hundred beats per minute. Example two. Example two at ninety beats per minute. And here that is again at a hundred beats per minute. Example three. Example three at ninety beats per minute. Here that is again at a hundred beats per minute. Example four. And here it is at ninety beats per minute. And here it is at a hundred beats per minute. Example five. And here's example five at ninety beats per minute. And here's example five again at a hundred beats per minute. And the last example, example six. Example six at ninety beats per minute. Here it is again at a hundred beats per minute. Once you've been through these examples, you should have a pretty good idea of how to deal with half bars. However, we'll do some exercises now in order to really hammer it home so you understand it properly. Exercise 1 This exercise consists of two separate exercises, exercise 1a and exercise 1b, and they both use the same structure and the same chords. However, they have different finger picking patterns. Exercise 1a. The first thing to watch out for with this exercise is the fact that there's a repeat in the fourth line. So you play the first four lines twice. The next thing to watch out for is the half bars. And these are on the second line, the fourth line and the fifth line. 
I'll just play through it first so you've got a good idea how it sounds. If you're still learning and have trouble with some of the chord changes, there is one option we can do, and that's with the G in the first bar of the second line. And you'll notice we're playing the bass of the G and then the top three strings, so we include the third fret of the top E string. However, to make the change easier there, you can actually play the bass and the D, G, and B string instead of the top three strings and this way you don't have to finger that third fret on the top E string. You can see here there's a couple of ways of doing that and the first way is to go from the standard fingering down to the fingering of the D, G and B string and then going back up to the top three strings. However if you prefer you can actually go down to the D, G and B string and stay down there for the next chord as well. Whichever way you choose will work, so just choose which way you prefer. Here's just the alternative lines being played at 90 beats per minute, starting with alternative 1. And here that is again at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Now here's the second alternative version at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And here that is again. Right, let's try the whole of exercise one with a two bar introduction at 90 beats per minute and I'll include the repeats as well. And here that is again at 100 beats per minute with a two bar introduction.
Once you can play this exercise with the metronome, you might want to try it with the backing track. At the end of this video will be the backing track with the whole exercise repeated at 90 beats per minute, 100 beats per minute and 110 beats per minute. However, here it is being played through just once at 100 beats per minute to give you an idea how it should sound. Right, let's move on to the next exercise. Exercise 1B. Now, because exercise 1B has the same chords and structure as exercise 1A, you can use the same backing tracks to practice both exercises. And you'll also notice the repeats are in the same place and also the half bars. However, this exercise has one minor difference which makes it a little easier. You'll notice that in line 2 bar 1, the G can be played as a shortened G because you don't have to play the top E string. Right, let's hear exercise 1B being played at 90 beats per minute with a 2 bar introduction. Right, let's hear that again at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction, but this time try and play along with it if you think you can. Right, here's exercise 1B being played at 100 beats per minute with a two bar introduction.
And as I did with exercise 1A, I'll play through this exercise now with the backing track at 100 beats per minute. If you want to play along with me, please feel free. There's a two bar introduction as usual. Right, let's move on to the next exercise. Exercise 2. This exercise is very similar to exercise 1 in that we've got several parts to the one exercise, but this time it's exercise 2A, 2B and 2C. However, we'll use the same chord progression and the same arrangement for all three exercises. Right. Let's take a look at the chord progression and arrangement. And you'll notice looking at the chords, they're all quite easy except one. The F major is a bit awkward and I know many people have trouble with that. However, I'll put a link down below in the description to a whole lesson just on that chord and that might help you. The only other thing I need to point out is in the arrangement and that there is a repeat there. So if you play this through correctly, you repeat the first six lines. Here it is being played at 100 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Just listen to it the first time and I'll include the repeat in this one. Hopefully you notice that I used the same finger picking pattern in this exercise as I used in exercise 1B. And this isn't unusual as all the finger picking patterns are used quite commonly. And you'll find particularly certain artists they'll use a lot of the same finger picking pattern as they've got their own preferences. You might find that you need to practice this exercise for a bit to speed it up and get the chord changes fluent. However, if you're ready, here it is being played at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Try and play along if you think you're ready.
Here's exercise 2A again at 100 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And I'll include the repeats. Try and play along if you think you're ready. At the end of this video, you'll find a backing track for exercise two. And it's at 90, 100 and 110 beats per minute. So I'll play it now at 100 beats per minute with a two bar introduction so you can hear how that should sound. Right, let's move on to the next exercise. Exercise 2B. This exercise is exactly the same as exercise 2A, except for the finger picking pattern. So you'll be playing the same chords and the repeat in the same place. However, the finger picking pattern is different. So you might need to practice the finger picking pattern for a bit before you try it all the way through. However, I'll get straight into it and here it is at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Try and play along if you think you're ready.
Hear that is again at 100 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Again, try to play along if you think you're ready. As with exercise 2A, this one will also fit with the backing track. So here it is being played at 100 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Exercise 2C. This exercise shouldn't take very much explanation at all. In the same way you've played exercise 2A and 2B, you play exercise 2C, but this time you choose your own finger picking pattern. And it can either be one of the finger picking patterns you did from lesson 20, or you can choose your own or make up your own. Either way, it's just a case of playing these chords on top of the metronome and then the backing with your own finger picking pattern. The hope is that exercises like this encourage your own creativity. So see how you do. Exercise three. To do this exercise, you'll have to take a look at the ebook, which if you haven't already got it, it's available at the website www.ebooksforguitar.com and the idea of this exercise is that you now use what you've learned in this lesson and the previous lesson to try to put your own finger picking pattern to a piece of music and the tunes I've chosen for this particular exercise are Candle in the Wind by Elton John Hey Jude by The Beatles and Yesterday by The Beatles. Yesterday's a little more difficult. But if you prefer, you can just practice with tunes you might like and already know. Again, by doing this, hopefully, even though you're using somebody else's music, it's encouraging your own creativity. So, I hope you do well. If you're new to this channel and these lessons, please consider liking subscribing and hitting the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. I'm going to continue adding new lessons and new courses to this channel. 
And if you want to see some of the courses I've already uploaded, either visit the YouTube channel and look through the playlists, or visit www.ebooksforguitar.com. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you for your support.